Who do you spend most time studying or working with, and why? I have been working in a multinational company for over three years, and I work most of the time with my colleague, Emily. We two go together really well, and it is well known that we can solve many problems together. This is why the management often assigns us to the same projects and tasks. What kinds of things do you study or work on with other people? Why? In my office, I am a part of a team, and my team is assigned different tasks and projects. So I pretty much always work with other people for my day-to-day -day responsibilities. This includes market research, competitor analysis, talking to corporate clients, making a presentation, conducting meetings and so on. Are there times when you study or work better by yourself? Why or why not? Sometimes I need to think outside the box and do some brainstorming to solve a tough problem or bring innovation to an approach. In times like this, I like to work alone. Besides, I often like to work on small presentations, like making a few slides, all by myself. It gives me more freedom and time to think. Is it important to like the people you study or work with? Why or why not? It is highly important for me to like the people who I work with. Whenever someone works in a group, he or she needs friendly, understanding, agreeable members in the group. It is even more prevalent in an office setup where we spend most of our waking hours and solve tough problems. Describe a tourist attraction you enjoyed visiting. You should say what this tourist attraction is, when and why you visited it, what you did there, and explain why you enjoyed visiting this tourist attraction. One of the tourist attractions that I enjoyed visiting was the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall is a series of walls and fortifications that were built along the northern borders of China to protect against invasions. It is one of the most iconic structures in the world, and I was fortunate enough to visit it a few years ago. For this excellent topic, I will share my experience with you. I visited the Great Wall during the summer months, which is one of the best times to visit as the weather is warm and pleasant. I decided to visit the wall because I had heard so much about it and had always wanted to see it for myself. I also wanted to learn more about the history and significance of the Great Wall. When I arrived at the Great Wall, I was struck by the sheer size and magnitude of the structure. It was amazing to see how it snaked its way across the mountains and valleys, and I felt a sense of awe and wonder as I stood there taking it all in. I decided to take a cable car up to one of the highest points on the wall, as I wanted to get a bird's eye view of the surrounding landscape. I then walked along the wall for several hours, exploring the different watchtowers and taking in the incredible views. What made visiting the Great Wall so enjoyable was not just the physical beauty of the structure, but also the sense of history and culture that surrounds it. It was fascinating to learn about the different dynasties and emperors that contributed to its construction over the centuries and to see how it has become such an important symbol of Chinese identity and pride. Being able to experience such an iconic tourist attraction firsthand was truly an unforgettable experience that I will always treasure. Discussion topic, different kinds of tourist attractions. Question, what are the most popular tourist attractions in your country? Our country is famous for its lavish natural beauty, historical buildings, architectural feats, food streets, and sandy beaches. Those places, along with large museums, Theatres and some beautiful islands attract millions of visitors each year. On an average evening, if you go for a walk in a park in our capital city, you will notice many foreign tourists. Finally, many shopping malls, these days, are also popular destinations among visiting tourists. How do the types of tourist attractions that younger people like to visit compare with those that older people like to visit? I believe some tourist attractions like a sea beach, mountain, Lake or a modern shopping mall are loved by people of all ages. However, when it comes to the differences between the tourist attractions preferred by younger people and old people, there are some subtle distinctions. For instance, younger people often love places that have parties and loud music going on and have great nightlife activities. On the contrary, elder people often avoid loud music and parties and want to relax and enjoy themselves. Finally, when elder people are up to the historical values of a place, the younger generation often prefers places that offer adventures. Do you agree that some tourist attractions, e.g. national museums or galleries, should be free to visit? Yes, 
I wholeheartedly believe that most museums and galleries that are funded by or supported by the state should offer free entry. This is primarily because when I see young people and tourists hanging out at a bar or shopping more regularly, but scarcely visiting a museum or art gallery, it worries me. Some art galleries and exhibitions are expensive and not accessible for young students. This has a huge negative consequence. Due to this, our younger generation is learning very little about our history, art and culture. The same goes when tourists roam around the city except for places where lies our national history. This is not desirable at all. Discussion topic, the importance of international tourism. Question, why is tourism important to a country? Well, to start with, tourism boosts the local economy, increases the foreign currency reserve, creates job opportunities, develops local infrastructure, and contributes to the national economy. Moreover, it helps promote the cultural diversity and uniqueness of a country while also fostering global peace. Some countries, like the Maldives, Macau, Aruba, Bahamas, Fiji, and Croatia, rely on the tourism sector to a great extent as they earn a large portion of their GDP from this sector alone. Finally, when tourists interact with local people and get to learn about them, it removes any prejudice and biases they might have. It, in turn, promotes tolerance and global peace. What are the benefits to individuals of visiting another country as tourists? Traveling to another country is immensely important for individuals as it broadens our horizon of knowledge, views and understanding. It enhances our creativity, improves our communication skills, and boosts our confidence. According to a recent study, people who have traveled to different countries are likely to have at least 20% more confidence when facing new challenges. It also helps us make good memories, make new friends, and let us see the world from a different perspective. How necessary is it for tourists to learn the language of the country they are visiting? If someone is visiting a country only for a while, or let's say for a few weeks, learning the language is not much rewarding, especially in this era when English is used ubiquitously all around us. The effort and time to learn a language are huge when you will be only staying for a while and please consider that countries like India have more than 20 languages. On the other hand, if someone is going to stay in a country for more than a year, the effort would be rewarding as people always adore foreigners who can interact, even a tiny bit, in their own language.